Welcome to Insights from the Informed Woman magazine. Today we're exploring a crucial topic for women's health, reproductive aging and the role of anti-malarian hormone. This information is essential for women between 20 and 50 who want to understand their fertility. Let's dive into the science behind reproductive aging. Reproductive aging in women is primarily due to the gradual reduction in the number of eggs called oocytes over time. Oocytes cannot be reproduced, and while some develop and are released during ovulation, many others diminish as they become non-viable. This natural decline continues until menopause, at which point fertility ends entirely. Before menopause, fertility declines mainly due to the increased presence of oocytes with abnormal chromosomes, called a nuploidy. This affects the viability of eggs and reduces the chances of successful pregnancy. With advancements in assisted reproductive technology, how many oocytes can be collected through ovarian stimulation has become a focal point. While retrievable oocytes generally decrease with age, there's notable variation even among women of the same age. This is where the concept of ovarian reserve becomes important. It refers to the number of oocytes remaining in the ovaries. Currently, there is no direct way to measure this reserve, but certain serum hormone levels are used as indirect indicators. Follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, and estradiol are traditional markers, but this method has limitations. Changes in these hormone levels often occur late in the process, just before ovarian function ceases. The anti-malarian hormone, or AMH, has emerged as a more reliable indicator in this context. Known for its role in fetal development, AMH is produced by the granulosa cells in ovarian follicles. AMH levels can be measured in the blood, and although it doesn't directly reflect the exact number of follicles, it correlates well with the remaining egg pool. Notably, AMH levels do not fluctuate significantly during the menstrual cycle, making it a stable and sensitive indicator. AMH measurements now serve several clinical purposes, such as assessing fertility in the general population. It helps predict success in fertility treatments and diagnose conditions like premature ovarian insufficiency. AMH is also valuable for managing polycystic ovary syndrome and evaluating patients before ovarian surgery. For the general population, AMH levels are only weak predictors of natural pregnancy. Low levels do not necessarily mean infertility. AMH can suggest, but not precisely predict, when menopause will occur. It works best in combination with other measures. In infertility treatments, AMH mainly helps predict success in women with low ovarian reserve, but doesn't reliably forecast pregnancy for all women. In assisted reproductive technology, AMH can estimate ovarian response and help adjust medication doses to lower risks like ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. AMH is highly effective for diagnosing premature ovarian insufficiency early and predicting its onset, especially in women under 40, thereby aiding in early intervention. Elevated AMH levels are common in women with PCOS, making it a useful additional test for diagnosis. Measuring AMH before and after ovarian surgery helps evaluate how much ovarian reserve is lost, especially in procedures for ovarian tumors or endometrioma. In cancer patients, AMH can indicate ovarian damage from chemotherapy or radiation, though predicting future fertility remains unclear. Despite their value, AMH levels indicate the quantity, not the quality of eggs and therefore don't predict pregnancy likelihood. For individual women, the number of remaining eggs serves as an important fertility indicator of ovarian reserve. When evaluating AMH levels utility, pregnancy is more telling than mere OO site counts. When AMH levels is used as diagnostic criteria, their relevance to specific diseases and diagnostic accuracy is crucial. Ongoing research aims to enhance AMH's predictive accuracy and expand its clinical applications. AMH is a valuable tool for understanding ovarian reserve and guiding treatment in women facing fertility issues or disease-related ovarian damage. While useful in diagnosis, prediction, and treatment planning, its limitations mean it should be used alongside other assessments for best results. For more in-depth analysis and evidence-based women's health information, visit the Informed Woman magazine.